Hello, I'm Sensei Alex Kakio, and the title of today's talk is Why is Meditation So Difficult? But before we get into that, I'll remind you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I post talks in the future. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that'd be great too. And if you'd like to do a deep dive into Buddhist practice, check out my book. Perfectly Ordinary Buddhist Teachings for Everyday Life. It's available on Amazon, and there's a link to a sample chapter of the book in the description for this talk. Now, a long time ago in another life, I was serving in the U.S. Marine Corps, and I was literally being paid to work out. So I was very healthy and very strong. To give you an idea, I was about 30 pounds heavier and my max bench press was 305. Now clearly I'm not that big anymore and I bench nothing close to that amount, but I still like to exercise, uh, ride my bike, lift weights in order to keep my body healthy since this is my vehicle for practicing the Dharma. And nine times out of ten, it's not a problem. I enjoy exercise, I enjoy how I feel afterwards, but Every now and then, there's some, some tension, some hesitancy on my part to do an exercise. And usually, the reason for that is maybe I've taken a little bit of a break. Maybe my last workout didn't go as well as I wanted it to. So I'm afraid my workout won't go well. And as a result, I'm hesitant to exercise. And during those times, I have to remind myself that how good or bad the workout goes doesn't matter. The point isn't to impress anyone, including myself. The point is simply to go to the gym and work out, to be healthy. And as long as I get there, then I've done what I'm supposed to do. Now, I mention this because when we talk about meditation, a lot of people, myself included sometimes, have that same struggle. We listen to stories about the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and what their meditation practice was like. We look at monks and nuns who can sit for hours at a time without moving, and we think that if we can't do that too, then we're not doing enough. Or maybe we have ourselves a very strong, successful meditation practice, but if we don't think that we can sit for the full time, maybe we're busy and we just don't have enough hours in the day, or maybe if we struggled in the past, we can also fall into that trap of thinking, well, if I can't do it perfectly, I shouldn't do it at all. However, that's not the goal of spiritual practice, and it's certainly not the goal of meditation. We are not working to be perfect. We're simply working to manifest our own enlightenment in daily life. And anything we do along those lines, whether it's chanting, whether it's practicing gratitude, whether it's meditation, is a win. How long we sit on the cushion or how still we are while we sit doesn't matter. What matters is that we sit consistently. So when people ask me how long should I meditate, I tell them one minute. When they ask me how should I sit, I say in a way that feels comfortable. Now some of you may listen to that and think one minute is a really long time to sit. and. Maybe it is, but it's only a minute, you know, about the time it takes you to take an elevator to the next floor, and I have faith that you can do it. And some of you are listening to that and think one minute of meditation, that's nothing. I won't get anything out of it. And maybe that's true. And maybe you'll sit for a minute and decide, actually, I need to sit for 10 or 20 or 60 minutes, and that's wonderful. But we should set standards that we can meet, that we don't feel that are out of our reach. So if we sit for one minute, that's a win. If we sit for 30 minutes, that's also a win. The important thing is that we sit. And it's the same thing with our posture. 
If we can sit in a full lotus position and not do damage to our knees, that's great, and we should do that. But if we need to sit in a chair or lie down on our backs, that's also great. The Buddha said that we can practice the Dharma sitting, standing, walking, or lying down. So the position isn't important so much as we practice. As long as we practice, that's a win. And if we continue practicing, continue sitting, continue meditating, even if we have doubts on our abilities, then we will manifest our enlightenment into the world. So that's the talk for today. I hope it was helpful. If you'd like to learn more, check out my blog, The Same Old Zen. The link for that is in the description for this talk. And if you'd like to continue the conversation, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I love to hear from you guys, and I promise I'll respond. So until next time, Amitabha.